All right, hey everybody, this is Professor Klein back in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. And today I wanna to talk about the male reproductive system. All right, with the male reproductive system, we've got this giant model here, another model over here, and even a third model down here. We're gonna focus on this large model and by up here you can see first off orientation the posterior side versus the anterior side and we can tell posterior by the vertebral column spinal cord aorta and inferior vena cava all posterior structures we can also see the sigmoid rectum and anus, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anus. As you travel anteriorly though, you'll start to see things like the bladder. This is the bladder up here, large structure with the pubis, the pubic bone surrounding that. It's been cut so we can see inside, but that would be this structure. We've also got the testes and the penis so testes and penis for the male reproductive system want to jump up here as we track some things we want to track let's say urine urine starting in the kidneys as you filter everything out and then would travel down this ureter to the bladder Notice how the ureter comes in this way. This is the ureter crossing the aorta, crossing the inferior vena cava over to the bladder. That can also be seen as this part here entering the bladder. Different from the urine pathway is the sperm pathway. Sperm is, are produced in the testes and travel out to the head, body, and tail of the epididymis. I'll zoom in here for you. Testes, head, body, tail of the epididymis, and then something called the vas deferens, where the ductus deferens comes off of the test or the epididymis and travels all the way up over and enters posteriorly near the bladder. We're going to look at that more in a second, but those or that is the pathway for sperm. All right, let's go ahead and take off this part. And now you can see the internal structures. You can see things like the bladder and the actual muscle that makes up the bladder called the detrusor muscle. That's right here. And that detrusor muscle is going to form into the urethra. The urethra is traveling all the way from the bladder all the way out of the penis. Now there's different sections to the urethra. This first part is called the preprosthetic urethra. Preprosthetic urethra, it's before the prostate. This is the prostate right here. It's a acorn shaped structure surrounding the urethra. Now in between here is the prosthetic urethra. So as the urethra travels through the prostate, it's the prosthetic urethra. What is this other thing you ask? This is the ejaculatory duct. We'll talk about that in a moment, that that is where the vas deferens will be entering the shared pathway of the urethra. Traveling down, as you cross these membranes, these muscles here, it becomes the membranous urethra. Just where the probe is right now is the membranous urethra. But after you get past the membranes, all the way down the penis is the spongy urethra. Spongy urethra as it travels out the end of the penis. A couple muscles of the penis. First one, corpus cavnerosum. Corpus cavnerosum this purple structure here coming up and around. It's erectile tissue, and when it's filled with blood, produces an erection. The other type is 
corpus spongiosum. Corpus spongiosum, that's all this area here. This pink area surrounding the urethra. So the corpus spongiosum surrounds the urethra. As it heads out, it gets to the glans penis, glans penis, the tip of the penis. And in this case, this is an uncircumcised penis where the skin or foreskin reaches all the way over the glans penis. Circumcised penis would not have this extra skin covering the glands. Back to the sperm pathway, we said this is the testes, which has the scrotum. Scrotum is the skin surrounding the testes. And we said that sperm would travel out the testes to the epididymis. Also notice things like the testicular artery, te testicular artery right here and the pan piniform plexus, pan piniform plexus, supplying the testes and epididymis with blood. But notice this vast deference as you come up and around, and now you can see things like the seminal vesicle, seminal gland, seminal vesicle. This is producing alkalytic fluid, ejaculate, to add to the sperm. Sperm plus ejaculate fluid equals semen. Now this gives about 60 to 70% of it. The next part is the prostate. The prostate also adds to semen. Now, if we were to look in here and see exactly where this enters, well, you'd have to come in here to see the ejaculatory duct. The vas deferens goes into the ejaculatory duct which then goes into that prosthetic urethra, membranous urethra, and spongy urethra out of the penis. So from the prosthetic urethra down, it's a shared pathway between urine and sperm. Now sperm do not like to be acidic, and urine is acidic. So that's where the ejaculate comes into play neutralizing that acidity and the prostate adds to that. All right, in this last one, I'm going to challenge you to tell me what this anatomy is. So I'm gonna put up a picture with a lot of numbers and I want you to pause the video and fill out the numbers. So here it comes. That's been your video on the male reproductive system. I'm Professor Klein. This is the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Thanks for watching.